Thanks for staying with us. So we have with us, as you know, Princess Adeyinka Tekina. Now, the reason why we brought her here, because of one of my favorite beverages in the world, coffee. Oh, I love coffee. And we know you're the queen of coffee. Yeah. So um, tell us about coffee industry in Nigeria generally, because I know you have quite a bit of it. We'll talk about it later. Tell us about coffee industry in Nigeria. Um, I always like to start with like a very quick facts. And a lot of people don't know that 22 states in Nigeria grow coffee. 95% mm. mm. of more or more of what we drink in coffee is imported into our borders. Mm. Mm. And what that means is that most of the coffee that is grown in Nigeria goes to waste every year. Oh, oh wow. Oh, yes. Right. So that's first thing out. If you can check the customs report, we drink majorly imported coffee. Mm. And so when I got into the industry in 2015, I mean, I came thinking, oh, I'll just start a brand. But by the time I got in, I realized that there was no active value chain, meaning that farmers didn't have access to market. Mm. Lagos, as, as a matter of fact, can't grow coffee as well mm. because there are two major species of coffee in the world, which is robust and Arabica, and we're blessed with both. Mm. Mm. So Obudu, Joss, and Taraba, where this coffee comes from, grows, sure. <laughs> grows Arabica coffee, <laughs> and Robusta grows in um, Kogi, South South, Southwest, all those states. But imagine that everything that we drink in coffee is imported. Wow. I mean, let me let you guys jump yeah. in here. Okay, so I'm surprised that you mentioned this and I'm worried about, you know, how, many, how people are not tapping in. So we can't leave everything to the government. Yes. How, um, you know, involved are Nigerians in intervening in this deficit that we have? I think for me, having been in the industry for 10 years, um, what I see is a lot of times Nigerian consumers are not super educated in making decisive decisions based on knowledge. So that means I go into a supermarket, I see coffee, I pick it, yeah. I'm okay. And because also, I also look at it in the eyes of the value chain. Everybody is involved. It's not just the consumer. It's a value chain and their stakeholders. And the stakeholders usually start from the government because governments need to create policy. So for example, as an entire nation, we do not have one national policy that protects coffee. And what that means is coffee can come into our borders with no respect to local content, local farmers. So what it means mm. is, look, for example, we say this, what coffee, what oil is to Nigeria is what coffee is to Brazil. Mm. Mm. Their GDP is majorly on coffee. Coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. Second most oh. drank drink after water. See money just in just every home, there is a semblance of coffee. If you go to any kiosk, any malam, any mama in Nigeria, currently, you will see coffee. But why are we importing coffee into our borders when our backyard is filled with what we call in agriculture black oil? That's number one. Number two, Nigeria currently sits coffee under trade and investment. Coffee is an agricultural product yeah. or commodity. Why is she still under trade and investment? In this? Because, because it's just exports the coffee bean. Initially, we were the, one of the highest exporters of coffee in the early 70s oil. till mm -hmm. we found oil. So what that means is, for now, coffee should have been moved under agriculture yeah. that will allow her to have research, have a commodity board. A, lo a lot of exportations can be done, investment in terms. But currently, we don't have a national policy. And what that signals to the private sector is, we won't invest. Mm -hmm. we will not. So in the past 30 years, there hasn't been a dollar of investment in the coffee value wow. chain in Nigeria. That's what I would no, use way. to build the entire Coco house. That was cocoa. Oh, so Coco, West if you taste the coffee that we have in Nigeria, a lot of times when we, when we have sent our coffee from Taraba to um, an analysis across the con um, outside the country, they always say it has a cocoa taste. And it's because coffee and cocoa used to go side by side in the early days. Okay. And a lot of the taste that it gets, it gets from the soil. So, and I have been clamoring for this for the last 10 years. Three years ago, we were in the National Assembly trying to defend a policy for coffee. We do not know where that policy is. So for me, all the stakeholders need to be involved, especially the government. Mm. And that's the first rule. Mm. We need to have the president. Mm. You know, we've gone everywhere. The head of coffee has come to Nigeria two times that I know of. I was in his delegation. He has tried to talk to government officials. But I think this is the time we needed to take it to the office of the president. Okay. There has to be look. We have to look into coffee as a trading commodity and also as a local commodity for us. Mm. We're going to be very short break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.